Hello, this video shows how to get a CentOS VM up and running on a Mac. So we go to virtualbox.org and go to the downloads page, get the version for OS X. We'll download that and install it. This is the hypervisor that will be running our Linux operating system and any other OS's that we want to install. So on the Mac it's pretty straightforward after it downloads uh, you run the file that was downloaded, the DMG file then click on the VirtualBox package icon So this starts the installer. It's pretty straightforward. You just uh, take the defaults and click through. Once it's installed, there will be some configuration steps that we will go through. So the install of VirtualBox doesn't take long at all. Now once it's installed, we'll run it. It'll have an icon in the Applications folder. So this is what VirtualBox looks like the first time you load it up. We're going to close some extra windows here. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is uh, download CentOS. So uh, we'll go to CentOS.org, go to the download page, get the x86-64 version of CentOS 6.7. There's a bunch of mirror sites. Click whichever one you want. We're only going to download dvd1.iso. We'll uh, jump ahead and uh, so the ISO file will also be in our downloads folder with uh, the VirtualBox DMG file that we downloaded earlier. So skipping ahead we'll start VirtualBox uh, assuming that the uh, download finished on uh, without any errors. So we'll create a VM called CentOS. It's going to be uh, Red Hat 64-bit Linux box. You can name it anything you want. Uh, this I presume will be a web server but uh, it might be a database, it might be a firewall, it might be a load balancer. So we'll give it a gig of memory. We'll choose VMDK. I prefer that format but um, We'll set the uh, size of the disk to be 4 gig. That's enough for the OS and for uh, demonstration purposes. So a 4 gig disk, VMDK format with a 1 gig of memory. So that's all there is to it. Um, then we go into uh, storage configuration. We'll select uh, what is the CD drive and mount the ISO that we downloaded. So um, basically go to our downloads folder, click the CentOS ISO file, and uh, on next boot it will mount and boot from that and that's uh, the installation of the operating system. So we'll start the VM. It's blank, it has nothing in it, it's got a CD ISO mounted and this is what comes up will choose to install a system. And it will boot. Then go into the installation steps which uh, with this version has a GUI. Uh, there's no need for us to check the media. There's no scratches on our CDs. So um, at this point the installer starts uh, again uh, GUI based so uh, there's a button down at the bottom that we'll scroll down so we can see so 
So just go through, take the defaults. Um, it's going to warn you that it's going to overwrite everything in the disk. You can leave uh, this alone or name it the name of the machine. We're just going to call this one CentOS. But this will be the machine's host name. Pick your time zone. This will be the root password for the server. So it'll warn you if you don't use special characters and have uh, not enough length to the password. The basic server is a good starting point. Um, that way, if we wanted to, we can clone this VM, the base install of the OS, and then branch out from there easily, uh, turning them into web servers and database servers and load balancers, but still have uh, the same common base operating system. So we'll speed this up a little bit. Um, this install does take a little bit of time. I've doubled the uh, the speed here so hopefully that will save a bit of agony but uh, it installs a lot of stuff as you can see Python libraries it's going to install a C compiler um, all of the things to support Java and various other programming shell programming and other things Samba is for mounting uh, files in Windows, to and from Windows, Postfix is an email system, these are the kernel files, SE Linux is the secured configuration of the operating system. This is being installed inside of a VMDK file, the entire operating system, and that gets read and executed essentially by the hypervisor, which acts as a multitasker, um, basically sharing the hardware with multiple software operating systems. And with a multi-CPU system, laptop, my laptop has eight CPU cores, so I could easily run several operating systems. It's really memory that becomes the constraint at that point. The bootloader is installed. The installation is complete. We reboot the box. So at this point, um, we're going to be booting in and logging in uh, to CentOS 6.7 and we'll need to do some network configurations. So the network that this is on is an internal network to the hypervisor. Um, we'll get into the details of that in a minute. So log on as root, the password that you entered during the install process. So we're going to zoom in here and there's only a couple of network files that we need to edit. So uh, by default, VirtualBox uses 10.0.2.0 slash 24 as a network. And it has a default gateway at 10.0.2.2. And we will put that into the Etsy sysconfig network file. This will allow us to get to the outside network. And we also want to configure uh, the network to um, start on boot. Currently this operating system does not have a running network so it's uh, by default configured for DHCP. We'll keep that and just set it to start up on boot. Otherwise you would run a command uh, service network start or service network restart and that's how um, you uh, start the network after you make configuration changes. So it went out and it got a DHCP address of 10.0.2.15. .2 .2 .2 .2 .2 .2 .2 
So here we'll go uh, into the hypervisor. We've turned off the, the VM. Uh, we've got a NAT network uh, configured for the VM and we'll set these port forwarding rules into place. Um, for port uh, 80 HTTP requests, we'll put that on 180 and for SSH we'll do 122. That's the local host port that will then get forwarded to the VM on port 22 and port 80. So we'll want to look at the hypervisor and make sure that we have a NAT network. If one's not there, just click New and take the defaults. This shows the 10.0.2.0 24 default network. So we'll start the VM, and at this point we should have everything uh, needed for it to communicate with the outside world, and for us to communicate with it from a uh, terminal window, which is the Mac version of uh, a Unix uh, command prompt. Actually, it is a Unix command prompt. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, we'll log into uh, the VM, and one change that we need to make is in sshd underscore config. We have to make permit root login, uh, use VI, edit the file, change it from no to yes, save it, and do service network restart. I've already done that, so just verifying that the setting is there. This is uh, slash home slash root, and the contents therein. So here we have a terminal shell on the Mac, and if we SSH using dash P and specify port 122 and use root at localhost, that will get us to the VM. And it's actually a more convenient way to do, to interact with the VM uh, instead of through VirtualBox. So uh, there we see. Um, on the first time you SSH, it'll do a key exchange you'll answer yes to exchange keys but nonetheless uh, if we ping google.com we get a response 